We are live. Hey, hey, everybody. Um, if you saw the video I put up, I put it on um, social media, on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. I did put it on YouTube. But hey, YouTube. Uh, hello. You know what? What I'll do? I will play that video. I'm going to have to send it over. I'm having struggles here with with StreamYard. So if you guys are on, please leave me a comment. Let me know that you are on so I can see who's around. I have a question for you. I'm just going to pop the question up here. So I'm talking about how do we tackle struggles with our dogs when we're really wanting to be in a reinforcement-based question? Or I see it. We really want to be in a reinforcement-based program. We, we really want to help our dog and meet our dogs from a place of kindness. So then we're working, and it doesn't matter if you're training your dog for to be a great family pet. You, you're training your dog because you want this amazing relationship, or maybe you, you're training your dog for sport, and then you get stuck. So my first question, I have two questions for you tonight. Hey, look at all you people saying hello. Hello. Um, what is a current behavior your dog keeps getting wrong and you struggle on how to help them? How do, how do, how can you help them? What, what is it? So leave me a comment. What is it that your dog is doing that consistently, like if, let me take an example, like if it was you're training a running contact and your dog constantly um, misses like the first one, but gets the second one right or whatever puppy jumping up when we have treats, barking for attention. Okay. What have you tried? So leave me your, your, what is your challenge and what have you tried? And meanwhile, I'm going to see if I can uh, find that video and then I'm going to upload the video so that I can play it for everybody who has not seen that video. Man, I, I've shot a lot of videos today. Let me just tell you that. Barks if I leave at all. Stranger danger. How old is that dog, Alicia? Stranger danger is not uncommon with young dogs. Okay, I'll try this again. Trying to find the moment right before he jumps up. Um, I like that. Overexcitement and training for special cookies. Uh, overcoming, I'm using less value cookies. Okay, that's great. Elizabeth, I love that. You also can take a behavior that is he's really, really confident with and use that as a time that you use a higher value so that he he's confident, he's less likely to get excited, more likely to have success, and you can use that. Okay, uh, I am going to upload this video. For those of you who have not seen the video, it's a one minute video and I'm going to try and share it right here so that you, everybody can see it because not everybody on YouTube got to see it. So here I go. I'm going to try it. I hope the audio works. If the audio doesn't work, well, it's one minute and then you can, you can tell us, write it in the chat. Okay. Write it in the chat if the audio doesn't work. Um, Okay, let's go. Let's try this. Uh, here we go. Okay, so no audio, no audio. Here's what I'm going to do.
here. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I'm going to. Okay. The only thing that I could do here. Let's see if this works. Um, this is me being really techy. I'm just gonna play a little clip. Tell me if you can hear it, guys. Can you hear that now? I'm going to jump on and do a live later to explain exactly how I fixed it and how you can fix your dog training challenges using me. Okay, we're going to try this again. If you fix a dog training problem, then you could be teaching a trick or a skill for a sport or some simple behavior like sit. How do you fix a problem once you've got one? Okay, let's use fitness as an example. How can we fix this challenge? Something we don't want to have happen. Look at the back feet moving. How many times does she move her back feet? We don't want her to move her back feet. Right, count again. That's a lot of paddling in less than three and a half seconds. Eleven times those back paws move. You want to be a reinforcement-based dog trainer, but how do you fix these problems when they come up? How do you stop something? Eleven paddles in less than three and a half seconds. Leave me a comment. Let me know what would you do to teach that dog to not paddle her feet. I'm going to jump on and do a live later to explain exactly how I fixed it and how you could fix your dog training challenges using reinforcement. Yeah. What else? Okay. Do you know why it sounded tinny? Somebody said it sounded tinny. This is my high tech. Here's my microphone. Here's my earphones. And I put my earphones on the microphone. That's called innovation. That's called necessity is the mother of innovation or something like that. <laughs> it's the only video I'm going to show you today because, uh, wait, I'm going to show you one more and I'll do the same thing. I don't know why this isn't working for me because normally um, when I, when I broadcast this way, it works brilliantly. So um, thank you for your understanding. I see I got one angry face. So if you're watching and you guys give me a heart to counteract the angry face, and in my mind, Swagger, I'm going to get an angry face. In my mind, the angry face was an accident, okay? <laughs> okay, so you guys had some great examples. Um, dog, oh, Debbie, that's a brilliant one. My dog doesn't stay in reinforcement zone. Um when I throw the toy. All right. Now, where did you go? There we go. Look at that. This is a great one. Um, you throw the toy and the dog will not hold reinforcement zone. Hi, Amy. <laughs> hi, Amy Swagger. Amy says hi. So that is a great one. And you might. And, and so, you know, what do most people do when they have that kind of a challenge is that they maybe say stay, stay, stay when they throw or they hold the dog back when they throw. And so, um, or, or they, they, I know Debbie, you wouldn't say that they would go, ah, ah, no, no. And they would, they would, uh, correct the dog or this is a common one. And honestly, guys, this is, this is a mistake I made with Buzzy. So if you read my book, Shaping Success, you know, one of the things when I was looking back 10 years later, and I said near the end of the book, what I said is the, my biggest regret with Buzz. Does anyone remember that? give you bonus points if anyone can remember what was my biggest regret um that i wrote about in that book i'm going to leave you to think about that and then i'm going to ask you my second question uh so i almost answered this so the question i've got on the go is what is um what was my biggest regret with training buzz and my second question to you is when your dog does something that you're not happy with, that you want to communicate with them, that is not acceptable. What is your go-to? What is you something that you consistently do? Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, we'll put a link in where you can buy shaping success. So Elizabeth Crabtree. Holy smokes. 
it wasn't that I regret giving him a timeout. It was that was my go to with him. Elizabeth Crabtree, either you are very good at referencing in a book, you've got a brilliant mind when you read a book on how you take on lessons. That's that's awesome. That when I look at my life with Buzzy was my number one regret. And you know what, guys, we should never have regrets because our dogs are here to give us an education and help us grow as human beings. And so that was his big lesson that he shared with me. But that was my go to. That was my go to for um, when he did something wrong. You knocked a bar, you got a timeout. You paddled your feet, you got a timeout. And quite honestly, it, it is a lot of people's go-to still, maybe not on the same scale, but um, I see it a lot. Uh, uh, wrong. Uh, try again. Try again. Oops. Try again. Try again. Oops. Try again. Uh, those are smaller p punishers. I mean, I, 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 I know it's a non-reward marker. Let's not split, split hairs, but it it's still... You are telling your dog, you are responsible for figuring this out, pal. And are they? Because if you trained it with absolute brilliant clarity, do you not think that your dog would be getting it right now? <laughs> That's a great answer, Wendy. I go to the podcast looking for a solution. That's awesome. So anytime... I have a dog training challenge. My number one go-to now is I look at the environment. What is, what is all the information I can glean about the environment? First, I want to go to, there were some great answers here um, on, on um, when I posted that to, to Instagram, there were some, some really good people, uh, comments when I said, what would you do with the dog like this who was paddling her feet? And there were some great comments. Um, so Bridget in Cornwall said, does she paddle if she has her front feet on the ground or just when they're on a fit pause? So Bridget did exactly what I said. The first thing you do is look at the environment. So ask yourself, does she paddle just when she's on a fit pause? And the answer to that one, Bridget, was no. So that gave me some aha. So we'll go on. So Bridget goes on to say, uh, if she doesn't, I'd ask her to put her back feet up and reward stillness, then introduce something for her front paws. So let me get that. Let me change that around. She did not paddle if her front feet were on something, but not her back feet. Okay, so she did paddle if her if her back feet were on something, but not her front feet. Um, so, but that was a I love the way you think, Bridget. Think think environment first. What about my environment? Can I change? But what about my environment is contributing to the mistake? So that's the first thing that I would ask. Um, so there was another. There was a couple really good things here, uh, Roop said, uh, I would probably stop the exercise, take a look at my setup. Again, environment, brilliant. Ask myself if I could break things into smaller steps. So you're getting close or change the setup to make criteria clearer for my dog. Yes. I'd rather start with incremental progress and be given the dog opportunity, right? Like these are brilliant because when we manipulate environment, what we're going to do, I'll get back because there's some more is we're going, our goal is when we're training our dog, we want to minimize frustration and maximize success. So environment is the absolute easiest thing to look at. Um, so there was another really, I think the very first comment here, dogs like dot pro given some shout outs here, use a stable surface to make the exercise easier, train just the hind legs, create less excitement, less motivation. So in that video, it looks like she's frantic and she isn't. She isn't over aroused by the food, but that was what somebody else said. Um, 
is that she's too excited. And so go to a lower value food. That's brilliant. Again, about the environment. This is one. Wait for the behavior you want when it happens. Mark it verbally and click it with a treat. Well, here's the problem with this. Sharon will help me out with um, telling you. I'm going to give you I'm going to let you guys in on a little behind the scenes secret. If you've ever seen any of our podcasts, you've seen me refer to in podcast number 22. I talk about boom, ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. So uh, the podcast that I'm looking for is um, the thing before the thing. So I think, I'm guessing, I don't have a clue, nine. So here's what I do, a little bit behind the scenes. When I'm shooting a podcast, I say in podcast number 22, and then my team edits out what I say and puts in the right number. So they might cover it up cover up my mouth with a graphic they might um you know what see it wasn't too far off sharon thing before the thing is number 16. okay so the thing before the thing is if we wait for the dog's pause to be still in that environment and then we reward that we are rewarding what happened before the pause became still as well so let me just give you some history on what you're seeing there is she had perfect standing still. So um, the way I grow behavior, and this is what I would do when, when we have the environment and we're looking at the environment, we then, we, if we can't th see anything obvious, then we go back to where did I have success and what were the layers? Because everything that we train is in layers. So let's go back the layers to what you're seeing there. So the finished behavior is my dog with her back feet up on an inflatable disc. And I, my goal is for her to stand still with or without her front feet on something. Thank you, Tina. Um, I do not have a recollection over a hundred podcasts, but Sharon does. She can tell you every single episode. So what I do is what are all the layers that go into that standing still with her feet on a disc? And it starts way back at the beginning. Can my dog sit with the front, with her front? Does she paddle her feet in a sit? No, she doesn't. No, but I add distractions. I add, so it's not just, can your dog do this? It's how brilliantly does she know how to do this? And that's where you just keep adding complexity. Um, the, we talk about it in, um, podcast episode 22. <laughs> I do know what 22 is. Uh, the distraction index is, is not, I do know, I do know um, the uh, resource guarding, the episode number for the resource guarding is 66. You know how I do that? Because she, she was very devilish and 666 is, is the devil. So, um, but the distraction index, the distraction in text intensity index is 24. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Um, and so, yeah, the invisible pressure of bubble of pressure is 22 because I said 22 so many times I had to go look it up. So I do know what that one is too. Anyway, 24, distraction intensity index. So it isn't just your dog can sit. It is how many different distractions, how far away can you do it when you're running? And so we get the sit and then we get the stand and I go, I can walk all around her in a stand. I can look at the sides. I can get her to turn her head. All of these things, like there's a million things. I didn't have any paddling in any of those. So what happened between there? Well, and, and it, the why of what your dog is doing doesn't matter. But it, it was interesting for me because it's just a hallucination. This is what I think happened is after we taught sit and stand really, really well, one of the early games we do with puppies is perch work pivots and spins. So what does a dog do in perch work pivots and spins? Their front feet are on one thing and their back feet keep moving. And every time your back feet move, you get rewarded for that. So as that behavior got bigger is when we started to see this behavior. And so all that I did was went back to what she could do. Her cue for putting her back feet on something is feet. Front feet is pause. So I just put her in a sit. 
gave her cookies, put her in a stand, and right behind her was the thing to put her paws on. Give her cookies. I would say feet. She would do one, two. I would feed, 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 say search, and get her off. And I just kept reminding her I'd stay a long time with her in a stand. And then I would walk around. I'd give her cookies. I'd say feet, feed, 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 and get her off. And so I did that. And then I didn't put her on an inflatable disc next. I went back to um, a board that was just similar to standing, but your feet are slightly raised and the feet stay quiet. And that's how I transitioned back to, I need you to stand with your paw. But what you have to do, guys, is you have to, you have to recognize this. So everything that we do is in layers, layers of learning. And and that's what allows the dogs to be successful because there's so many things that they understand that all of these layers lead to me teaching this and all of these layers. Like, for example, the retrieve allows me to teach different games with your mouth when we when we teach. So in our in our foundation, we have a, a lot of foundation programs and some of you guys might be in them. Homeschool the dog. Wag Nation are our two that we probably have the most people in. And there are so many layers in there that allow you to do other things. For example, people want a dog who is comfortable wearing a head halter. Some of you, I would strongly encourage you get your dog 100% comfortable wearing a muzzle because when you go to a vet, they, they may need to put your dog in a muzzle and you don't want the dog to learn to be stressed out at a vet. And so I believe, is it in Wag Nation or Homeschool the Dog, the game Place Your Face, Sharon? So Place Your Face is just a game where we teach the dogs to want to put their face in a head halter. Now, back when I did um, Swagger, I just like held up the loop of the head halter and waited for him to put his face in. And guess what? He did it. Thank you, Blue. And remember I said our goal is to decrease frustration and increase success? Swagger was brilliant, but how much frustration would have been associated with, I'm just going to hold up this little piece of wire and wait for you to put your nose in it so you can earn a reward. Our goal is to create clarity through the manipulation of the environment. And so in Homeschool the Dog, there are different layers that go into the dog understanding and they want to do it. They want to do it. It's just simple. Um, like this is fun. And can you do layer one? Layer one is just like eating a cookie out of a cone. Layer two is, you know, just, just shaping things that are obvious to the dog. There's no chance they're going to do anything but what we want. That's good dog training. You know, back when I used to do shaping with my dogs in the um, early 90s, sadly, there's still people calling that good dog training. But I, I thought I, I was all, you know, the bee's knees because nobody was really doing shaping for sports. And now I look at that and look at what we do now. And I just go, good on you dogs back then for figuring stuff out. La layers of learning. I'm just going to share with you a little video. And I will, I will, the, the mu it's just music, but I'm going to, you know, give you the nice tinny sound, give you the full appeal. So these are some of our tricks, our tricks that are in our, some of those foundation programs. But I want you to look for those layers, the environmental manipulation of one layer that allows for another layer. Okay, so I'm just going to try this again. Uh... Okay, look at me, I got it.
So can you see those layers that were in one behavior went into another behavior? So the dog being able to bring the paper made ring stack easier. The dog being able to touch your feet made crossing over easier. And that's where when you when you have all these strategic layers behind you in your dog training, you can figure, you know, you can figure out what's my environment. Where, where have I lost the clarity for success? Because if you, you know, if you guys understand the five C's that we talk about here all the time, that we, we, we start, we need to have our dogs um, be connected. And then we need to have the, the dogs have hundred percent clarity with what we're looking for. And that is what allows us to bring confidence to the dog. And so when I think back to my earlier dogs and when they struggled like this did with the paddling of the feet, they probably would have got timeouts. Oh, I'm going to take you off because you're paddling your feet. There's so many things the dog could have offered. She could have offered, okay, I'm being taken off and I don't know why. Was it my ears not right? Was I not looking in the right place? What, what was it? And by, by going back to let's create an environment where the clarity of success is, is brilliant for you and then grow that. And, and, and if you've done it with layers, the dog knows, oh yeah, we've done this, we've done, okay, we can do that. That's brilliant. That's what we're looking for. And so um, I want to go back to your questions. No, so now going through this, do when you think about what your challenge is, do you have any ahas about what you need to do or what you can be doing? That's that's what. And maybe you don't. Maybe you're, you're like, no, Susan, I'm still way out there. And so if you look at those students that were in those videos, um, some of them are first time dog owners, right? But their dog training is brilliant because they started with homeschool the dog, just put in those layers. Now, I think one of those games was maybe from recallers, but many of them are, are in Wagnation. So that is what clarity looks like. How many of you guys that are on here right now are in one of our programs and understand what I'm talking about? And if you are, just tell me what program you're in. Okay. Well, Maria already said I'm in uh, recallers and hailing 360. Yeah. So if you have been following my podcasts, nice. If you have been following my podcast, oh, recallers, we got Wag Nation and recallers. If you, you've been following my program, my podcast, you guys have an understanding of what I'm talking about with the layers of kindness, the layers of clarity that allows the dogs to be successful. And so you may know, and if you, and if you do know, I know Swagger. And if you're familiar with that, then you know the kind of kook I am. You not you know the kind of coaching we do, and if you would like to get a deeper look at what those layers look like, maybe you're just you've been doing the podcast or you've seen some of my videos on social media. This is the a great time to do it because we do right now until Monday night. Um, we have a promotion on, and I'm just going to do. Shoo, there you go. If you aren't in Wag Nation. If you are not in homeschool the dog and you would like to learn more about the, the, what our program, what it's like being part of our program, then there, there's an opportunity for you right now, but I'd like to hear from some of you still, um, that it's, you've been, I love when people just come to us from the, from the podcast or from social media posts. And they go, well, this is really a different way. Yeah, Lynn, ha, ha, Swaggy has been here 
cheering you guys all along. If you haven't heard Swagger, come here, please. Manka? Oh, you're going to trip over that cord. Maybe you shouldn't. Okay, Lynn. I've got a cord going all the way across the room, so he can't do that. Um, so if you have been following along social media or in a, or any of my podcasts, then maybe it's time you get to know us on a deeper level. And this is a perfect opportunity because you're getting the, the homeschool the dog and Wag Nation for six months. It's pretty good. I, if I do say so myself. Okay. Uh, difference between recallers and Wag Nation. Wag Nation is a membership, which means every month from now till the rest of your life, we, we add one new trick for you to learn and one new dog training concept. Uh, that's okay, Sue. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you love the, the po podcast and, and we're very protective of our, of our community. Our community is amazing because um, I want to be really, really clear who we are and it might not be time for you to um, join our community on a deeper level. And we appreciate that. And we honor that because we like our community uh, and, and not that that people who don't believe and think the way that we do aren't welcome to experiment, but we want our community to be like-minded in that you can experiment, but you you can't be um, unkind. How's that? All right. So recallers at the, uh, so recallers is a year-long coaching program. And the membership is it, you can you can go month to month. It's only ten dollars a month. Once you have you've joined here with um, this code, you actually are getting it at a discount because homeschool the dog is three hundred dollars, and six months of Wag Nation would be sixty. So I can do math. That's three sixty, and it's actually only ninety seven until tomorrow. All right, so it's just an opportunity to um, to experience what it's like to be part of our family, and what handling. So the question was recallers versus Wag Nation. There's new tricks, a new trick that you can teach your dog every month in Wag Nation. Plus, there's a, a focus on a dog training concept. It could be a lesson that I give you. Um, so there might be two things for you to train that month, but it is a, um, it's dog training and then trick training. That's what it is. And, and it is a Valentine's day special. Yes, because this is Valentine's day week. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Uh, uh the online coaching, our online coaches, I think are the best because I mean, I've seen other people's programs are. We, we, we are very um, passionate about our, our mission and that we all share the same core values. So you will find the kindness that we're teaching you to train your dog with. You will see that in the, the way that our coaches will coach you in that they are focused on creating the, your environment. So that frustration is minimized and success is maximized. It's it, and, and that's the congruency that I hope you guys are looking for for your life. Okay. Um, so any questions or let's get back to, does this make sense to you guys? The layers, looking at environment first, looking at the the being careful of was there a thing before the thing for me to be considerate of of what my dog is misunderstanding now or is it just that my foundational layers are either not there or not there um in enough confidence and understanding meaning when people say to me my dog can do that at home then i know you are focused on teaching your dog how to do that at home you aren't teaching the dog um, how to understand, even if this happens, you still do that. Even if that happens, you still do that. Even if Bob is out chasing squirrels in the backyard, you still do this. Even if every dog in the neighborhood is at a pool party next door, 
you still go do this. And you want to do this. So that's the kind of complete understanding that we want from our dogs. Okay. Um, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Yeah, Karen, the layers, the layers do make sense. Okay, Katie, uh, bitey puppy with Katie. We have 30 episodes in um, on puppy training. But the problem, I mean, the good thing about our podcast, guys, it's great dog training. The bad thing about our podcasts is it's all this great dog training and no one to coach you through it. So Katie, if you are not in one of our programs, I would strongly encourage you to jump on this right now. Like ideally you would go homeschool the dog wag nation and then ascend to recallers. And then by the time that puppy is seven, eight months old, you will have the puppy that everybody, you know, will envy. I kid you not. Okay. Um, and thank you. Thank you for that. I think our online coaches are just amazing human beings for sure. Okay. Any other questions about the, about the layers that we're talking, that I'm talking about? It's just so important that you understand that, that if your dog, if you, your dog is misunderstanding part of what you're doing, then there is some weakness. You can't build a foundation unless you have strength in those layers. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go back to that website. Uh, there you go. I'd like every, I'd like everyone to be part of this. I, I, I mean, my mission in life is to help dogs worldwide to have the most amazing life possible. And for everybody who owns a dog to have the kind of life I share with my dogs, because uh, I mean, I, I just love having the kind of peace and ease that, that I have with my dogs anywhere I go. Um, it's about, you ask, I'm having trouble understand, understanding, complete understanding, any tips or tricks. Isabel, it's, it's about not getting too far ahead. So here's what most people do. You, I'll, I'll give you any example. Let's say your neighborhood puppy training class will get um, puppies in that are wanting to visit everybody. So immediately there isn't the foundational layer of back when I taught puppy classes, I would, and today what I would do is I would say, go and look at these podcasts and get these behaviors under your belt. And then it, I'd give you two weeks to do that. We're coming into class now and boom, you have a dog who understands reinforcement zone. You have a puppy who understands hot, or hot zone. So you go to class and they go, oh I, know, oh, I know that. Yeah. And you have really high value rewards or go to an agility class, a neighborhood agility class where in our program, you wouldn't be putting your dog anywhere near agility equipment, probably for three or four months. But in most neighborhood agility clip, quit, they would put the puppy on the equipment or the dog on the equipment week one, week one. Not all of them. There's a lot of decent ones out there, but many because they think that's what people want. They want to see their dog doing agility and it's okay because they don't want to be a world champion like Sus you, Susan. But what you're doing is where's the connection? Where's the clarity? Where's the confidence? You're going from, hello, my name is, let's throw a challenge at you right now. How do you like me so far? And that's where dogs get frustrated. They get the zoomies. They start sniffing. They start leaving. They start barking at other dogs. They start scratching their ear. They go, no, I don't know. Can you, can you read my TEMP and see that I'm confused? And so that's why complete understanding you get that by allowing the dog to tell you when they're ready for more challenge. That's, that's the important thing. Okay. Um, Jan, nine month old poodle puppy afraid of 
trucks and lawnmowers. Jan, have you done homeschool the dog or recallers? I see that you're in home, uh, handling 360, but um, you really need that confidence at the, you know, and, th and that's one of the problems. I, I had very similar problems with this. Um, it wasn't like trucks because we're out in the country, but because it's COVID and I didn't get, I, I couldn't go to anywhere because here in Ontario, we were like locked down beyond lockdown. And, and so she didn't get to see all these distractions. And so it did hold me back. And so what I did is I didn't progress my agility till I got her confidence up in other environments. So, um, yeah, Jan, it's a it's just counter conditioning. So you can do one of two things. You can, um, you know, contact can't contact the team at wagatdogsthat.com. Have that conversation with them, and and you know they might suggest that you put a pause on H three sixty and join recallers. And, um, you know, I know I have 100% confidence in my team doing the right thing to make sure that you have the absolute best outcome for your puppy, because, you know, that is more important than dog agility. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up, Jan. Um, that's awesome, a April. Join Homeschool the Dog. My dog is amazing at all the games. Yeah. And that, you know what? I remember the first time Sonia says, I'm watching my dogs get the games is such a great feeling. Um, I'm trying to think it was, I was in high school. I think I was in grade 10 and I got a summer job working for some professional handlers who showed dogs like at, you know, um, Westminster Crofts, the, you know, pretty dog show. And they had a booth that they sold equipment. And so anytime I had a break, I would go over and watch the obedience ring. And I thought that was magical. And that feeling still st stays with me. When I see one of my puppies get something, when we, I see my dog finally have confidence. I've been training dogs professionally for 30 years. And I started training dogs back then. I came home and started training our pet dog. So I would have been 15. Actually, I was training Tina before that, but really seriously training. So I would have been 15. So that's close to 15 years ago, right? Do the math. Okay, you better be laughing. You better not be laughing. That was a long time ago. Um, so the difference between homeschool, the dog and recallers homeschool, the dog is, um, 12 games. Recallers is 40 games. Recallers is a year long coaching and it's, it, 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 and people join either of them. They just keep staying, but most people come into homeschool, the dog and wag nation, and then they go on to recallers just to learn more games and get, um, a different level of coaching because there's a lot more games. So it's spread out over a year. Um, okay. Do you guys have any other questions? Because, um, I haven't been on a live for a while and this is fun, but, um, anyway, I don't see anything. I live out in the boonies. Here's one. Uh, my dog doesn't get a lot of exposure to the public. How often should I make a point to make a trip to town to start building layers? Elizabeth, here's what I would do. I wouldn't do it once a week. I would do it like three times a week and then don't do it the following week. So it's better to have constant exposure. So I would do that with this. I would go, well, I, I probably went, you know, four times a week and then I would give her four or five days off and then I'd go four days in a row and then I'd give her a couple of weeks off and I, it's better to have, um, and, and you want to make sure that every, every opportunity is a positive one. 
Okay, so you've got to pick your your places. Um, and if you're in homeschool the dog, what I would do, or recallers, I would go to those environments and just play um, one of those one of our homeschool the dog games, one of our recaller games, and then get back in the car, and then maybe drive to a different location and do the same thing and get back in the car. So you're you're experiencing for the dog that what goes on at home is the same amazing stuff as what goes on when you're off and out and about. Okay. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. Uh, I think tater salad is by the hot box. We, so um, it is the, uh, the, he's, he's by the fireplace downstairs. <laughs> Which is unusual because when he knows I'm live streaming, he usually comes up here and is a pain in the butt. I don't know how he knows I'm talking to an audience, but he wants to be in on it. Um, so, Sue, if you go to dogsat.com forward slash heart 14, you'll learn all about homeschool the dog. But if you have any questions, guys, just ask. I don't know if I've got our... If you got any questions, you can you can go to uh, wag at dogs that, and they will help you because that's who they are. They're awesome. Okay, I'm gonna jump off now. I don't want I didn't want this to be too long, and I'm already over 45 minutes. So thank you everybody for your comments. Swagger sends his love. Uh, he's he's just giving you big hearts to all of you, and um. I hope to see you in homeschool the dog. Remember, you only have until Monday. If this is if 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 I'm a fit for you and you think you're a fit for us, why wouldn't you join us? We'll see you. Okay. It's Swagger saying you're awesome. That's what he's saying. I can understand it's Swagger talk.